Uh, so now we have Olivier is going to talk about Slint. Hello. Yep. Um, so about me, I started open source working on uh, contributing to the KD project, which is a project made with Qt. So that led me to be hired as my first job at Trolltech, which was a company making Qt, later bought by Nokia. But in 2000, so 10 years ago, I left to create my own company, software uh, services, and still I had a little, I was still a bit in the Qt ecosystem, and I was talking with Simon Hosman, also from, from Qt, and we were like, the sad state of current desktop UI, can we do better? What would happen if we would create a new UI toolkit from scratch? And in 2020 then, um, we created Slint. Uh, so this is implemented 100% almost in Rust. Actually not, uh, almost, uh, yeah, most of it is implemented in Rust. Um, it's a native toolkit. So native as opposed to runs in a browser. So it really runs uh, natively and it's aiming at uh, desktop and embedded <coughs> at first. Um, so it uses its own domain-specific language. Um, so it's like a macro. And you might say, wait, is this, I wanted to, to develop in Rust. And now you're saying I need to learn a new language to do UI. And uh, it's, it's yep. But uh, fortunately, learning this language is not uh, more difficult than just learning the API of any other, any other library. So it's just, just like uh, learning an API. And Rust is not really meant for UI. There's a lot of ways that Rust is a bit too explicit in some cases, where for UI, you just want to describe the UI in a really uh, more, uh, in a way that, that uh, our language is, is much better at. And then the, this thing is only to describe the user interface, but all the logic, of course, is written in, in a programming language, so for example, Rust. But we also have bindings to uh, uh, various languages like C++ or JavaScript, and we tend to add more. So let's try to make a short demo. I, I cannot do the demo because it's a lightning talk, but I just took some screenshots. So let's just create a new project, add Slint as a dependency. There is a extension. Uh, so this is Visual Studio Code, where we can install an extension. We search Slint there, and one click install. And if you don't have Visual Studio Code, it's OK, because this is just a, a wrapper around a, a language server protocol, just a LSP. So that works with most, uh, most editors. Uh, and if you don't want to use a, it is also it's, it's all optional. But let's go back to main.rs and add some some uh, code. Here we add our, our little macro. It shows a, a small window with a text and a button. While typing that, of course, I had the full power of this extension. So um, that includes auto completion, uh, go to symbol, and everything else. We even have this little um, property editor there that we added. Um, but, the, um, but the coolest thing here is that we have this uh, code lens uh, show preview. Let's click on this. It can be a code action as well on other editors. And a window up here. Um, so the LSP server behind the scene opens a new window. And this is the preview of what you just typed. And if, if you type, it updates live. So this is really interesting because when you do UI, you really want to see what happens as you do. You don't want to spend a long time compiling and stuff. Let's add a callback here, btn underscore clicked. And in the Rust code, we will instantiate our main window that we created from this macro and connect to it with the, the generated on btn clicked. So this is generated by the macro. And to have some, so some Rust code can be called. So, um, if we click and run the code, that's it. We have, we have the thing. Here we see that the two, the two windows on the screenshot have different uh, style. That's because Stain is styleable. The diff so we have, for example, the fluent style, or we also have here a native style because we really want to, to be a uh, native toolkit, so using the native style. Um, let's add a property that we can set with a, uh, uh, now in the callback we say set count, get count plus one. So we added this property that we use in the text. Properties are reactive, meaning that when you, 
when you change them, they automatically change. And, and Slint knows what, what to refresh. Um, so let, let, what can we do? So here is a little demo. Okay. Yeah, that works. Um, so this is, this is uh, apparently not working really good in this, in this uh, presentation, uh, but, but uh, the idea here that we would see, you will see the demo running on WebAssembly in the browser. So it's, um, it's meant to be a, a desktop framework, but it also runs for demo uh, on, the, on, on the browser. And now... Um, okay, so this doesn't look good on this with this projector, but again, this is a, a gallery which show a, a few controls. Um, so, what about the performance? How lightweight is it? So, um, here I have with me, I have with me this microcontroller. So this, uh, so, this is a Raspberry Pi Pico. It has three less than three kilobytes of RAM. I said kilobyte, not megabyte, and. Um, And yes, it's working. We have scrolling, a, bi a, bi a bit, some animations. So that shows that shows what we can do. So the project is open source. It's entirely developed on GitHub. We accept pull requests. Um, uh, uh, we also accept, of, uh, of course, bug reports. Please send a GitHub issue, open GitHub issues. Um, the, license, the license is GPL for open source projects, and we're also a company, so we want to make money out of it. So that's why we have multiple licenses, so GPL for open source projects. And we also have an ambassador license, as we call it. It's, uh, it's a free license, which you can use for proprietary, so proprietary software. You just have to, to say that you're using Slint. And there is also a commercial license with support and so on. So in the future, we planned, so after already three years of development, we are now almost ready to release the version 1.0. So it, if all goes well, it should be released this month, end of February. And the other thing we're working on is to improve our, our little preview there and to make it uh, like we, that you could drag and drop things, drag and drop widgets, and have actually a design tool where, uh, so if, even designer could do the design without even touching this Lint language. So that's, that's our, our hope for the future. Um, so that's the end of my presentation. I hope that you got, um, that it made you want to try Slint. And please do contact me um, if you have any question or if you're wondering if you can use Slint. Um, I'll be around, but please ask, ask questions. Uh -huh. Thank you.